St. Mark gives us some other parables here. I just want to point out that parables are not unique to Jesus. It's a very common way of uh, uh, teaching in the Semitic world, okay? Um, there's some here I want to read one. The emperor said to Rabbi Gamaliel, I know what your God is doing and where he is seated. Rabbi Gamaliel became faint inside. He said to him, what is the matter? He said, I have a son in one of the cities of the sea, and I have a longing for him. Pray me, tell me about him. He said, do I then know where he is? And the rabbi answered, you know what is on earth, you don't know what's on earth, and you're claiming to know what's happening in heaven. Little parable, you see. Oh, I wish we had time. The rabbis, they're, they're clever. They're not as, obviously, because this is the divine son of God and the divine mind illuminating. But anyway, um, how shall we make a comparison of the kingdom of God or in what sort of parable shall we set it forth? As to a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds that are on the ground, and when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the plants and puts out great branches so that under its shade the birds of heaven roost. The kingdom of heaven doesn't look like much, but if you let it into your heart and let it have its own energy, it'll transform you. And the birds will come. You know, people will come and you can help them. Uh, you see what parables do? They give us now, I'm explaining them. Well, there's a hundred explanations for this parable. Um, but the notion is what? The kingdom of God doesn't look like much because we're stupid. We don't get it, you know? Mother Teresa leaves uh, one order because the Lord told her to start caring for the poor. And most people said, this is not Enon. How long is she going to last doing that? And now, thousands of women do that. You see? Okay. Uh, so, uh, I want to move on now to uh, these reflections about... Um, huh. I lost those. I'll just take it from here. Uh, Okay. Uh, and he said to them, Take care what you hear. In the measure you measure out, it will be measured to you. Okay? Uh, and added to you. If you're really good, you know, and listening, uh, the one who has will be given. And the one who doesn't have, even the little he has, will be taken away from him. Uh, and so the kingdom of God, you see, is like this man who sowed seed. We've done that. And then, uh, uh, how can I talk about it? It's like the grain of mustard seed we just talked about, right? Uh, and so, in such parables, many of them, he spoke to them the word. Hologos the word, the gospel, see? Uh, as they were able to understand, without parables, he didn't speak to them. But when he was of his own, he explained them. Why? Because you have to preach the gospel to the world. You have got to, I've got to make sure you get it. Because if you go out on a preaching tour and you work for three months and nothing happens, son, it's because what you're planting is the smallest of all the seeds. You see? Now you've got to watch that it isn't choked out by weeds and so forth. You see? Uh, you've got to know the laws of the kingdom. And so, our Lord uses this magnificent way of teaching. We get it with a story, right? Uh, sometimes 
we don't get it. I'm trying to think if I could give you another story um, like one of these. Um, I should have thought of it before, but we can't, you know, because an event speaks. And if it's a symbolic event, or it's made, the event is made a symbol, you see, it speaks. But it requires a little work. I'm not just going to spell it out for you. Or even the ones we've just seen, you see, uh, or some of the others, or some we're going to see. You've got to work at it. I don't get it, Lord. Well, keep thinking, keep praying, keep working at it. Why? Because all that is opening up your heart. All of that is making you more receptive, not only to this parable, but to many other things I want to teach you. But your heart has to be open. If you say, oh, I give up, I don't get it, I think I'll just quit. You see? You'll never learn. So our Lord, because he loves us, and is a good teacher, you see, uh, he spoke to them this way, way you see. Uh, but without parables, he didn't speak to them. But alone, to his own, he explained everything. Because these poor guys have got to get it. They're going to be preaching to the whole world. And so, our Lord has this way of teaching us, huh? Uh, to these parables. It would be a great exercise to just go back and read some of these parables again and see if they speak to you. You know, reading these parables is not like watching a movie. Oh, he said this, and then he said that, and then he said the other thing. No, they're addressed to you. Did you get it? Uh, the, one of the first ones we had, if you remember, uh, was also a sower one. The sower went out to sow. And it happened in the sowing that some fell beside the way and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And straight away it sprang up because of not having deep earth. And when the sun rose, it was scorched. And because of not having roots, it withered. Some fell among thorns, came up and choked it and it did not yield fruit. And the other fell on good land, and yielded fruit as it came up and grew, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, some hundredfold. He who has ears for the hearing, let him hear. Would you say? Suppose I tell you a parable. A man went out to wash his car. So he got a bucket and water and a sponge and a hose, and he started washing his car. And he scrubbed, and some places all the dirt came off easy. Some places the dirt came off only a lot of work. Some places it didn't come up at all. Come off at all. He who has ears, let him hear. What did I say? What am I talking about? Now you see that the parable is open. You could take it in many ways. Uh, but there's something about success and failure in that man's efforts, the man in my parable, you see? Now you've got to inquire. Why does he say, why do I say in this one? If you've got ears, listen. But just don't listen, think. Well, then you could say, well, maybe the man washing the car is the Lord. And he has a bucket and a sponge, and he's, but if you hang on to the dirt, it's not going to come off. You've got to be willing to let it go. All your dirt, all your stuff you hide behind, all the rest, your sins, your habit patterns of sin, your aberrant emotions, whatever. You know, let go of them so he can scrub them off. Now, I've given you an application. The only one possible? No. That's the thing about parables. Huh? Uh, but our Lord, who has a divinely illumined intellect, tells perfect parable. Uh, you remember the one, to give you another example, there were, were um, a, a man owed the king the number in the, in the, in the text. They've given up trying to you know how many talents it is because it get, you know, the rate of exchange keeps changing, but it's more or less the national debt. 
And he goes, and the, the king says, you're going to jail till you pay it. Well, he's going to go to jail for eternity. Pay off the national debt. So he kneels, oh, have mercy on me. And the king forgives the whole thing, the whole national debt. See what I'm doing? I'm explaining the parable. You know, making it culturally available, like, you see? But what happens, he goes out, the guy owes him 5,000 bucks. And he grabs him and says, you pay that or I'll send you to jail. The debtor's prison, somebody goes to jail. They don't have, you know, it costs $35,000 a year to keep a prisoner in jail right now. It didn't cost that much. It didn't cost anything. The family had to feed the guy. Well, he didn't even eat. Uh, so he's in jail. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to find the money somehow and get him out. Right? This guy says, pay. And so the, his fellow servants are really sad. They go to the master. You wrote off the national debt for this guy. He won't forgive this guy 5,000 bucks. So the master calls him back in. And he says, what are this I hear? You're going to go to prison until you pay the last penny. That means for eternity. I mean, how is he going to pay off the national debt? You see? And so then he, he applies it for us. Huh? You see that this is a lived out parable. It's not like some of we have here. So will my father do to you unless you each re 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 uh, forgive your brother from your heart. Whoop. He applied the parable, didn't he? Pretty clear. No forgiveness, you don't get forgiveness. Pretty simple. Right? Forgive and you'll be forgiven, as it is in Matthew, right? Just good business. Uh, but what I'm trying to point out is the power of these images to mediate a reality that um, if we only hear it in just prose speech, you know, be very good and forgive people and the Lord will forgive you. All right, thank you very much. But that won't make much sense. It won't make much of an impact on people. But that parable, the guy owes the national debt and the king just dismisses it. And he goes out, oh, the guy owes him 5,000 bucks and he beats him up wants to send him to jail and his family to jail. You get that. You see? What's, what's the, the uh, moral of the story? We owe the Lord the national debt. And there is no way we can pay it. None. But if you want to be forgiven the national debt, forgive your brother, forgive your sister, the 35 cents or the 5,000 bucks or whatever they owe you. Because they've offended you, write it off. Forget it. Reach out to be reconciled. And this debt will stay canceled for all eternity. You'll never hear about it again. You see, this is what parables can do. It, it's it, it's um, what Lonergan calls, Lonergan's a dead now, theologian, philosopher, brilliant man. Intuition into a phantasm is a picture, and you get it. This guy, begging for, you know, and, and the king knocking off the national debt. And he go, you can see him going outside now. He gets a hold of this other guy and he throttles him, Jesus says. He's got a hold of his neck and he's, pay me what you owe. Or I'll send you to jail. And that word gets back to the king. Oh boy. You see? But you need that uh, phantasm. You need that image to get it in a way you can never forget. Well, we're, we're finished with parables for a while. Uh, and next time we'll start uh, with the, the, the next section in Mark.